Well hi guys and girls, Emma again, welcome back to the spare room. Time to start a new engine. Had this set of castings normalising in the drawer for since about August or September last year. And they need to be made up. A lot of you have probably seen Myford Boys construction series on this little engine. The castings are from him and they're beautiful quality. If we have a look, they're really magic the way that they've come out of the mould. He's made that with a core there to give a hollow section and there's a bit of taper on top there. Pretty nice underneath. This casting's fairly straightforward, as is this one. And there's a few other bits out of brass and so forth to go in it. This is basically machine flat on the bottom with a couple of bolt down holes. This is machine parallel to this surface. And these are drilled through here for pushing bushes. So that's pretty straightforward machining. This is the same. This is a zinc aluminium casting. It's quite heavy actually. It's a lot heavier than this one. It's going to be bolted on a flywheel and machined up. And bored. So they're pretty straightforward pieces. The castings come with a great set of drawings. Really pretty good value for money if you're looking for a little engine kit. It's pretty straightforward. His draw his his videos are thorough. He doesn't miss very much out or take much for granted. You do need to be able to read. And sometimes it's best to slow his videos down a bit so you can keep up. But his technique does make you watch his videos from start to finish because you miss bits. So you've got to hand that to him. So this is a little engine. I don't know how clear that is. His drawings are fantastic. Pretty nice and neat and easy to read. You've got two bearings which are basically just bushes. The crankshaft which is quarter inch diameter. The flywheel. Steam chest or valve box. Some valve gear. It's super centric. So it's pretty straightforward stuff. Pretty easy, it's all pretty easy stuff to build, and hopefully, I'm going to breeze through it pretty quick. It also comes with really quite comprehensive notes. Which is fantastic. So it's pretty much all there. For a beginner's engine, it's really a good way to go. It was fairly cheap. The castings are top quality. Probably it would be best made with a milling machine as well, but I don't have one of them. So we're going to set this up and we're going to do them all with a lathe, which will be a bit interesting. And probably we're going to set him up on a box afterwards with an aquarium pump underneath just to have a static drive model running on compressed air. Anyway, this is part one and the first thing really is to set this up and machine it which is not all that difficult it needs to be fly cut underneath and this this base needs to be machined here let's get that done and have a look at some setups so if we have a bit of a look at this setup it's taken me a few days to sort of iron it out and get it right and I have taken a couple of cuts off here just to make sure it all works. But I'll show you this. 
Got a little tool room vice bolted through onto the angle plate, bolted onto the onto the compound. Now that's really pretty solid. It's not going to move much. Um, the floor is going to move before it does. And it's got a bit of abrasive paper just to stop it all moving. And if we have a look, there's another piece under here. Just to, to stop that moving. And one bolt's going to be plenty good enough for that, I think, that way. When I get this angle plate up and running, I'd like to put a, a piece on the edge with a couple of screws in it just to, to locate it nice and square that you could take on and off. That'd be a good idea for this. And we'll see how that goes. But that's pretty much what we're looking at to, to machine that. Now, this is reaching the sort of the limits of this machine as far as travel goes here with the fly cutter this casting this is the bottom of the casting and the top of the casting are parallel all the other angles have got a little bit of draft on them to come out of the mold this one here and this one here did this is starting to clean up here now so you can't see that but let's set a piece of tool steel up in the fore jaw and fly cut this and see how it looks. So I've just sharpened up a piece of tool steel there. It's got a bit of clearance on this angle here nicely. Not very much but a little bit. And that's in the fore jaw nice and solid there. It's not going to move. If we keep our fingers out of the way that should fly cut that fairly nicely. Probably it'd be nice to make a decent fly cutter and my foot boy made one out of a face plate which is quite a good looking thing and I'd like to make one that just starts on the on the T-slot there with the bolt that bolts down and a, a tool in it it'd be really nice but that hasn't happened yet so we're going to live with this and it's only aluminium and it's not got to have a whole lot of it it's only really got to have enough off there just to clean up all the way around so let's go ahead and clean him up So that's probably about the last cut there. It's cleaned up pretty well. There's not a lot of support out here and I'd like to see a jack or something under it but there's nowhere really to support it so we're going to live with that. We got a little bit of chatter as we went through the cut so rub on a bit of glass paper will be plenty good enough for this surface so we're going to call this one done. And we've got the bottom there pretty well cleaned up. Next job I guess is to mark this one out. I might just bolt him up on the face plate and drill him. It might be the best way to do that. Um, this one here I think I'm going to probably bolt him 
onto the, the compound directly and face this side. So, anyway, while we do the next setup, I might upload this video. This is part one. As Mr. Mr. Pete says, be sure and watch the other videos that I've got up, but um, leave a comment and be nice to each other. That's really the only advice we have for anyone. Don't hurt yourself. This is fairly dangerous. It's probably not ideal. If you've got a lathe, keep your fingers out of it. This old machine, it will bite, and it does bite, so keep your fingers out of any lathe and stand well back. Test all the setups before you do them, but just to show you what you can do with a little bit of ingenuity and some setups. This has made this into a fairly decent little milling machine to do this. So, very pleased with that. Thanks for watching, guys. More soon.